But uh, spend some time with the Dodgers manager, Don Mattingly, who joins us now. Uh, you well rested there? Yeah, feeling good, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> why were Why were you suspended? What was the reason? Uh, I think as it, you know, kind of the crux of it, as we got right down to it, was basically for not keeping my players, as Matt comes out, kind of getting him under control before I continue an argument. And I just kind of corralled Matt off to the side a little bit and then let him go. And I think at the end of the day, you know, I accept that from the standpoint as a manager, you got to make sure your players are under control and you got to keep control there before you continue that argument. You realize how angry you you you're in the moment, or do you need to look at it, videotape or the highlights of? You know, it's funny because uh, a couple of people have told me, perception wise, it looks like you're ready to just hit somebody. And on the inside, I'm just kind of mad. I'm not really. I, I would. I'm not. I don't really feel like I'm out of control at all. So, I you know, like when when Hillman's taking me off the field. There, I go. I'm all right. You know, and in, in a calm way. So I'm not really out of control. I'm just. You know, I think I just get loud and get moving my hands. They call it, when I start flying, they know I'm in trouble. My hands moving. And I remember Lou Pinella telling me this, that he didn't realize what he was doing and how he was acting until his kids started saying to him, Dad, you're embarrassing us. Have you heard from your uh, boys? Do they ever say anything like, Dad, you know, chill a little bit here? Not really, because, I mean, I'm not throwing bases or kicking dirt on umpires or covering up home plate. I'm just basically fighting for my guys, and that was just a frustrating one the other day. I mean, all the time they're all frustrating when you when you get thrown out, but for the most part, Dan, you're just fighting for your guys, and, uh, and you know, I, nobody said anything from that standpoint because I think I haven't really got over the top and, like, did crazy stuff. But the difference between umpires now and when you were playing as far as – well, I mean, you can go down the list here, but their importance to the game, how important they act or feel or think, uh, how they're calling games. Can you compare and contrast the 80s to right now in uh, how umpires are uh, working the game? You know what? It's, it's a lot of the same. And I've always liked the umpires. I always look at the umpires as kind of part of the, part of the deal. You know, you kind of know these guys by name. Uh, most you know, for me, 99% of them are, are really good and handle it, everything right. And and then there's a few that you can't talk to, and those are the tough ones, the ones that think they're always right and you can't talk to. Uh, for the most part, you know, if you see, if you get, if I got in an argument with an umpire and got thrown out of the game and I'd see him later, I'd be like, how you doing? You know, sorry about <laughs> that. I got a little crazy. And then it's over, you know. And it's not really anything personal in those situations. It's just that you're fired up over the game. But, Donnie, you just said something that you, there are certain umpires you can't talk to. I mean, how silly well, is that, that? Well, that's that's always been the case, though. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's not really any different. Uh, a lot of guys are really good. You can come out and, and you can talk to them and ask them a question. Other guys you can't question. And I think the younger guys in general. When I was in the fall league, I remember questioning a call like, that ball's down. And instantly the guy looks over and starts screaming like <laughs> at me. And I'm like, wow. Well, I mean, this has been going, I mean, the, the, the bantering from the dugout has went on from the very first day I ever got to the big leagues. And it's still the same guys are going to banter the umpire a little bit. The umpires that, that deal with it the right way, never have any problems. You know, it's the ones that can't keep their head out of the dugout and constantly over there and wanting to talk back all the time are the ones that have trouble. If the, the good umpires, they keep their head straight, and they'll listen for a while, and when they've had enough, they'll just look over and say, hey, I've had enough. I heard you. <laughs> and then it's over. Guys know when to stop. But the guys that can't handle it, then the guys just keep telling them. Well, off. the problem is they got rabbit ears, Don. I mean, that's that's they, they, they hear everything. They're overly sensitive. Instead of just calling a good game, they seem to factor in way too much. And that's the problem I got with, you know, some of these guys think they're really, really important. Well, that's what I mean. Some, some though. And it's, it's a small number. For the most part, Dan, they're really pretty good. Uh, when you get those calls at first that are like bang, bang, and, and things like that, they're usually pretty good. Uh, I've found that the plays that are a little out of the ordinary are the ones that they'll miss the most. But there's a lot of movement. You know, guys are going everywhere. All of a sudden, there's a little, it's a little bit of a, you know, it has to be a spur of the moment call other than one that's just kind of right in front of them. Uh, do you know who's been thrown out of more games this year? 
than me. <laughs> the answer is no one. You, you're, you're number one on the list there, Don. I know. I, I can't. You know what? I, I kind of look at myself as kind of calm and under control all the time, but I <laughs> obviously I'm not. <laughs> He's uh, Don Mattingly, the Dodgers manager, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Your reaction as a competitor when you heard Melky Cabrera got suspended? You know, it, it's hard as a, as a competitor. You know, you really want to beat teams at full strength. We want to be better than the Giants and be better than them straight up. Uh, but that being said, you want everybody on the field to be playing on the same field and under the same circumstances. So, um, you know, with Milky, it's tough for me. It's personal because, you know, I had this kid I was hitting coach in New York when him and Robbie Cano came up together or pretty close together. Uh, I love him. I think he works hard. I think he's a good, uh, you know, a good player. And you hate to see this happen. And you don't know the reasons why or why I did it, but I just hate to see it happen to anybody. And it's where I start I start uh, getting on my soapbox about the testing. It just needs to get better and better, Dan, where guys don't think they can get away with anything. And that would be the best for everybody involved. Best for the fans, best for organizations, best for the players themselves, not doing something that they can have to keep up with another guy. Kurt Gibson said that the Giants should be punished as a team. If we hold teams accountable for players, what, uh, what do you think that would, what would the end result be? You know, I, I, I can't, you know, I haven't really thought it out, but you know, you, you kind of look at it like, you know, if somebody on your team has been playing all year long and gets caught, it, it should be something, you know, maybe it's, you take three wins away or you take five away or two away. I don't, I don't know what that number is. Uh, or even if that makes sense, because you can't give that win to somebody else mm-hmm. because you can't just arbitrarily pick one. But it seems like there should be some type of penalty when, when a guy on, on your team has been playing a big part of it, you know, ends up, he's played a hundred and something games for you. Uh, so there, there should be some kind of ramification, it would seem like to me. And you know this, as you've been around this game for such a long period of time, I, I mentioned that guys know about other guys because they either pass or don't pass the sight test. You'll see a guy and you go, damn, he's jacked up. Melky Cabrera used to be a doughy guy. And all of a sudden, you see last year and this year, I mean, he's, he's puffy. And you knew him when he was coming up. Did, did he pass the sight test with you? Yeah, I think, I think more than anything, Dan, you're seeing guys get leaned down now. Milk, Milky was kind of a little bit thicker guy. Yeah. It looked like he was a little out of shape and he got leaned down. But, you know, sometimes you, you see that with people, right? You see a guy that all of a sudden he loses 30 pounds in real life and you go, man, you're looking good. What are you doing? <laughs> I've been eating good and working out, you know? And the guy that you see on the street, you're not assuming that he's doing something. So you just kind of think, hey, Milky didn't like the year he had. He went to work this winter, got back in great shape, and he looks great. You know, and he's playing better. So you, it's it's hard. You don't. I don't ever assume guys are doing it. Uh, it's getting harder though when you see a guy's numbers really change from like what he's been for X amount of time, and all of a sudden his numbers jump to a different level. That's hard to say. That just happens naturally. How important is this series for the Dodgers with the Giants? They're all big right now. I mean, this is a fun time of year to be playing. Uh, every game is important. Uh, you feel you know, I kind of like I, I always talk. I talk to our guys about like the NCAA mentality right now. It feels like you got to win every night. You know, like you can't lose a game. And to me, that's the best way to play because you play try to trying to play at the top of your game every night. Uh, we've had two funny series with the the Giants too. We we go in there, get swept, don't score, run for three games, and then we basically go in there the next time and do the same thing to them. And so you, you, I don't know what to expect here, but I, I expect our guys to be ready to play. Uh, we've, we're coming off a, a pretty good road trip, 7-3. It's good to be coming back to a series that we got to put your hard hat on right away. And uh, so it, it'll be a fun series. You got a World Series team? You know what? We're getting there. I mean, we're getting – our offense is starting to look like a club that can score some runs on any given night from different places now. It's not just coming from one or two guys. We're able to score a couple of different ways, a few different guys. Uh, our pitching has been really good. And I know on paper, our, you may not look at Aaron Harang and Chris Capiano as, you know, it's not Cliff Lee and Doc Holliday and Cole Hamels, 
but our pitching did a great job, and we're starting to look like a club that is capable of beating it a few different ways, and we're playing good defense. I mean, we got speed in our outfield. Our outfield defense is, is really good. Hanley has solidified shortstop for us. Mark Ellis in the middle of the field. Uh, we're a pretty good club right now. We're just we're gonna have to see if we can you know, keep playing that way to you know, get ourselves in. Do you think your home run totals would be different if you were playing in uh, the new Yankee Stadium? Oh, no doubt. Do no you see doubt. Ichiro hit two back to back yesterday? I did, but those are hit pretty good. I mean, when he catches them, he catches them pretty good. But you know, when you, we go to Cincinnati and we go to Philly, I mean, we look like a different club. I mean, it's just like the ball flies out of these ballparks. And you, and you see it when guys go. You see, uh, um, I, I can't remember the kid's name, the outfielder for for the Reds now. Went from the Cardinals. Um, ah, I can't remember his name. Went from the Cardinals to the Padres. And now he's over with Cincinnati. You know, those are, you know, you go to the Padres. Is it Ludwig? You, yeah, Ludwig. So I'm thinking about. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he, had, he was having a good year for the Cardinals a couple of years. He went to the Padres, and that thing's, a, I mean, just like playing in the Grand Canyon if you don't hit it to certain parts of the ballpark. Uh, and you go back to Cincinnati, the ball's going to jump. So you can catch a ball and, and not really get it, and it still goes out. That changes your whole attitude at home plate. Well, I, I saw, the, I mean, the Yankees are built for their stadium, and that's why I say a lot of these teams, the Giants built their team for their ballpark. I, I think that's where you need to have that home field advantage, and the Yankees certainly have that. I mean, you make a mistake to any of those guys inside, you know, certainly left-handed, it's gone. No no question. They're, they're, they're some kind of dangerous. You know, that I, I'm kind of actually listening to the game last night on the way, you know, we're flying, so catching part of it, and they talk about how many games they've won with the home run, and percentage of runs they score at the home run and that's just the way they're built and like you said the Giants are built differently they went out and and get Pagan and, and Blanco and Milky this year they put total speed in their outfield they put three center fielders out there they got a giant outfield with good pitching and it's changed the way they play will you be suspended before the end uh kicked out of a game before the end of the regular season I hope not I, I never planned to be kicked out of any you game. none of these you went out there to say I'm going to get kicked out no, some of them you know you're you're going out there and you're fighting for a guy that your chances are pretty, you know what I mean? You, you can't just let a guy hang out there, you know? Uh, but for the most part, none of them. Uh, I go out there thinking, I'm going out here to get, I'm getting, I'm, I'm tired of this game, I'm out of here. <laughs> you got to get your money's worth, though. Well, yeah, you know what? I got to get control of myself, Dan. I, my, my wife says the only time I get this mad is when I'm talking to umpires or my ex-wife. So I don't know. <laughs> hey, good to visit with you. Good luck uh, in the series, and uh, congrats so far. All right, Dan. Thanks. All right, Don Mattingly. My ex-wife or an umpire? Oh, I think that quote will make the rounds. I've gotten rung up by a few women before in my life. <laughs> 